Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us here for this edition of the Notion at Work webcast. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Can you just indicate in the chat if, if I'm loud and clear, Bob or anyone else? <clears throat> thank you, Alex. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, thank you all for joining. Um, I am uh, William Nutt of Nutt Labs, and we are a integrated digital strategy firm and Notion consultancy based in New York. And I also run the independent website Notion VIP, where I publish tools and insights about all things Notion. So, in advance of today's session, I published a post about the topic that we'll be exploring, and that is personalizing private pages within team workspaces. So after today's session, you'll have the recording of this webcast along with this detailed text post to reference. And that video, the recording will be on Notion's YouTube channel. And then in the description, there will be a link to this post. So as I mentioned today, we're going to be exploring how individual team members can customize and utilize their private pages within the broader team workspace. And of course, those private pages are going to be as versatile as Notion itself. Team members can really use them in virtually endless ways. So today we're going to be building out kind of a personalized home page for team members that can serve as a template. And to do that, we're going to be building out this homepage for an employee of my favorite fictitious company, Loggerhead Labs. We'll be building it out for Carly Gant. And this page is going to allow Carly to organize relevant information and then also plan and track her personal tasks and recurring weekly goals. And to do that, it's going to offer some tailored views of the information that the team saves within its workspace level pages. It's going to offer views that only display the items that are relevant to Carly. And it's also going to display some independent information and infrastructure for Carly's personal productivity. So for that first part, those views of the team information, we're going to be working within this workspace that is <clears throat> organized around the intelligent workspace methodology that we explored a few weeks ago. <clears throat> and if you weren't able to join us for that one, the recording of the intelligent workspace episode is also available on YouTube within Notion's YouTube channel. And it also includes a detailed post describing the intelligent workspace. That's available at notion.vip slash bulletproof. Bulletproof is another term that I like to use to describe the intelligent workspace. But I'll quickly review it here just so that everyone's kind of up to speed before we move forward with this home page. So the intelligent or bulletproof workspace is going to utilize kind of my foremost recommendation for organizing a Notion workspace. And that is to concentrate your information within master databases. So we're working within this sample workspace here for Loggerhead Labs and all of these pages are available for you to view and duplicate. Um, and these uh, those links are available within the Intelligent Workspace recording uh, on Notion's YouTube channel. So uh, here within this data page at the top level, we have the master databases for Loggerhead Labs. There are five master databases and they're informed by the para methodology. The para methodology is a productivity philosophy that organizes all information into four buckets. So these master databases within the intelligent workspace are kind of adapted from those buckets. And three of the five that we have here are going to be relevant to building out this personalized home page template. So I'm going to describe those here briefly. Those three master databases that we'll be working with include areas. And I need to be careful about the amount of scrolling I do to keep the display on the recording clear, I'm told. But we have areas, we have projects, and we have tasks. 
And the areas are going to be the high level categories of your work. So they would be like marketing and business development and finance. And depending on the type of work that you do, they might also include your individual clients. Your individual clients might be areas. And then the projects are going to be the initiatives within those areas. They have a defined outcome and they're completed through a series of tasks. So then the tasks database is going to be those projects tasks. They, uh, it includes, it aggregates all of the tasks associated with the, with the projects. Um, and, uh, and they include a variety of properties, just a few of which, um, we will discuss here in a second. So in addition to these kind of master databases where you store all of your information, the intelligent workspace is going to include a home base page where you actually interact with that information. So you don't typically engage with all of that stored information from the master databases. Instead, you use what I call gateways, which are just kind of like strategic links and filtered and tailored views of that information so that you can view it in a context that's most helpful. So that's kind of how our personalized home page is going to work as well. It's kind of an extension of this home base or a personalized version of this home base that's going to offer views of that team information that's that includes only the items that are most relevant to the team member. So in our case, most relevant to Carly. So let's quickly take a look at what I mean by that. So on Carly's page here, we see a variety of features that help her throughout each day. And here you can see that we have a list of areas and we have a list of projects and we also have a list of assigned tasks. So those projects, areas and tasks are going to be Carly's filtered views of those master team databases. They're going to display only the items that are relevant to Carly. So as I mentioned, this page doesn't just show filtered views of team information, but it includes a few other features to help Carly with her daily productivity. And kind of the hub of this page actually is Carly's planner. And we're going to go through the details of this and exactly how to construct it. But this is kind of the second segment of Carly's task. And ultimately, you'll see that Carly's going to fold her assigned tasks into her planner. And then the page also includes a board where Carly can manage her recurring weekly goals. And then lastly, it includes a list of links and resources that Carly is going to commonly access. So the first step in creating this personalized home page template is going to be preparing your team information so that we can create these filtered views. And that's as easy as just ensuring that each of your databases include a person property that you can populate with Carly where applicable. So if you don't follow the, the intelligent workspace model to a T that's okay. So long as you are generally using uh, like concentrated databases for your information. It could be just a few or it could be many. So long as you're generally storing your information in databases, this is going to apply to you. But in the case of the intelligent workspace and the areas database, we have our person property here and we've called it users. So in the users property of the areas database, we can add the team members who might engage with that area really in any capacity. So in some cases like healthcare, that might include every member of the team because every employee of the company is going to need to complete healthcare forms and follow healthcare procedures and that kind of thing. But then for specific teams and departments like marketing, for example, you're only going to populate that with the relevant team members. So not all team members, will be added to the person property for um, for those more specific areas. And the same is true for the individual clients. You'll only add the team members who are working on those clients. So then the person property within projects, you're going, uh, we've called it team here and you would just populate that with 
any of the team members who are working um, on that specific project. So the project team. Now we've also included another person property for projects to indicate the project manager. Um, but in the case of uh, making this configurable for Carly's workspace, we'll be using this team property. And then for the tasks database, our person property is just the person responsible for completing the task. In other words, the person who the task is assigned to, which is why we called uh, this the view of this master database on Carly's homepage assigned tasks. So this will generally just include one person, the person responsible for completing the task. So with your person properties in place within your master databases, you're ready to actually create your page, your personalized homepage template. So of course, you'll start just by creating a page wherever you want to create it. And for the population of this content, you're going to find it most helpful to build it around a real person versus trying to just come up with dummy content for a uh, for a kind of a pseudo person. So you can either use yourself or an actual team member. Um, but if you have real content to work with, you'll find that much easier. So for the page icon, you can use the headshot um, of that person and you can either make it a nice round circle or you can just use the rectangular version and Notion will automatically add some rounding to the corners. And then same for the cover, you can um, you can create, you can establish sort of a consistent format to use across all of these team pages. Or you can just use the default options that Notion offers. Those simple gradients work really well when you're just creating a template. Um, and obviously when your individual team members actually get their hands on their respective pages, they can customize the icon and the cover and the name and everything else. So with your page created and named and your icon and your covers in place, we can start to add content to the body of the page. And let's go from the bottom up because we just prepared our team information for these filtered lists. So let's do that first. So where you see my areas here, of course, we've got three columns here and they each have a heading. I think these are uh, heading headings two or headings three um, and they've got a nice divider underneath them. So beneath each um, beneath the areas in the projects, we're going to include uh, linked databases that link to our master databases. So let's take a look at exactly how we created this filtered areas database for Carly. You'll start by creating an, a new um, block. You'll create a linked database and we want to link that to the master areas database. And this filtered list is actually going to have two different views because in our areas, our master areas database, we actually have categorized them in, in kind of two buckets. One are the internal operations oriented areas such as um, like HR and finance and marketing, like I mentioned. Um, and then the other one I mentioned, uh, we include our clients as areas. So this filtered list here is gonna have two different views, one of clients and the other of internal. So the first step we're going to do here is we're going to create a view of this database and we'll create the clients view first. And we want it to be a list. So we'll choose the list format and we'll create that view. Then we want to add our filters so that it's only displaying the areas that are most relevant to Carly. So the most important filter is to choose Carly or to choose the areas that only include Carly within its users. Users is that person property that we added to the areas database so that we could create this filter. So we only want the areas that contain Carly within the users. And then because we're creating the client's view of this filter database, we also, we want to add a secondary element to this filter 
where the type is client. So we're just about there, but we don't need to see that the type is client because we're already filtering, you know, for the, for the client type. So we can just choose which properties to hide and display here. And we're going to toggle off that type property. And there we have our client's view of this area's database. And so it's only going to display the areas where where Carly uh, is is working, where she is populated within that user's property. And then it's also going to display only the areas of the client type. So to create the internal type, we can just duplicate the client view and we can rename it to internal and then we just need to adjust the filter to display the areas where the type is internal and there we have our internal list so then you can delete the default view and that completes our tailored list of areas for Carly. So once that's finished, you can just drag it up into the column to place it nicely within this page template. So the projects are going to work the exact same way, but uh, just a tad simpler because we're not going to use multiple views. You'll just create one view, a list view, and you'll filter it only for the projects where Carly exists within the project team. We don't need, um, you know, to view different types of projects. So you'd only filter for the projects where Carly um, falls within the project team. And then depending on how you're archiving your projects, um, you may need to add a secondary filter to in, to show only the, the, um, the current projects, the active projects, or the future projects, you'll just, you probably are not going to want to display the projects that have already passed. So depending on the properties that you're using to, to indicate the status of your projects, you can filter for that as well. So that's areas and projects. We're displaying only the areas and projects that are specifically relevant to Carly. So we can move up here to assigned tasks. So these are going to be, of course, the tasks from the master uh, task database that the full team um, manages. And, and then Carly is going to use these assigned tasks actually to populate her planner. So she can just reference these tasks, see what are coming through the pipeline within the next week or so and then she'll apply it to her planner. And obviously we'll be discussing her planner in just a moment. But to create this filtered uh, tasks database, um, she is once again going to, comp going to create another linked database. And uh, this, ta this uh, database of, um, of her assigned tasks actually has three different views. So we've got a table view here, We've got a list view as well. That's just a bit simpler way to view those tasks. And then we've got a calendar view, which is actually the most helpful view of this database. And with the calendar view, Carly is going to be able to see uh, the, um, the tasks that are coming through the pipeline over the next few weeks. And um, these are kind of nicely dispersed, but um, you know, this will give her a sense as to whether there might be an upcoming day um, within the next few weeks where she's got a handful of tasks that are assigned to her that are coming up due. So she can either plan for that or she might uh, approach the project managers um, for those respective projects to maybe try to adjust the deadline. So this calendar view is really helpful. So to create these uh, this linked database with these views, Carly will um, create a new link database just like we did before. And she'll choose the, mas the master tasks database. And because she's creating these different views, she'll click add a view. And this table view is actually 
helpful. So let's do create a table view and we'll just call it table and create. So of course, the big step here is to filter only for the tasks that are assigned to Carly. So we want to add a filter and we want it to display only the task where the person responsible contains Carly. So that's the most important step here. And then Carly's really probably, because she's only referencing this database so that she can add these tasks to her planner, she doesn't need to see a lot of these properties. So we can go into the properties options here. And we probably want to display, of course, the name of the task, the area it's associated with, the project that it's associated with, and then probably the deadline. And that's it. She, you, we can toggle off all of the other properties for this because those will not be relevant um, for the way that Carly is referencing these tasks here. So once the filters in place and those properties are selected, we can create our other views. So we can duplicate this table view and then rename it to list, choose the list format. And here we have our list view and those areas and the associated projects are helpful. So we're going to add those back to this list. So we'll display the area and we'll display the project as well. And that's the helpful list view of Carly's assigned tasks. So then we can duplicate that table view one more time to create our most helpful calendar view. So we'll rename it to calendar. We'll choose the calendar format. And this gives us our calendar, but we need to specify the property that we want the calendar to use to display the items within the calendar. So within our little dotted menu, we'll choose the calendar by option and we will choose the deadline. And there we have our tasks populated within the calendar. Now, as we did previously, we want to choose the properties that we want to display with each item. And we probably don't need to display the project associated with, e with each item in this calendar view, but for a nice aesthetic and a little bit of context for each item, let's display the area. And if you're using icons for the areas like I've done here, um, it makes it really easy to get just a quick visual sense of um, kind of how these tasks are balanced for each area. So there we've just recreated our assigned contacts database with those three helpful views. Now, because Carly is just using the this database um, to kind of inform her, her uh, planner, I've placed this database within a toggle block here. So she can fold up that database into this toggle so that it's hidden when she's not actually referencing it to populate her, her planner. Um, and that just kind of gets it out of sight, out of mind when it's unneeded. So I've mentioned this planner a few times. Let's dig into what that's all about. So this planner is going to include Carly's tasks, not just those that are assigned to her from the Teams Master Tasks database, but also um, her independent tasks, either those that she assigns um, to herself or that she gets assigned elsewhere, just, you know, any tasks that um, she needs to complete um, that are not kind of formally managed within the Teams uh, infrastructure. Um, so to do that, she's going to create a new database. This will not be a linked database like those other ones were. And um, I, I'm not going to recreate this whole database, but I will uh, demonstrate the creation of the individual properties, perhaps. Um, but uh, when creating this new database rather than a linked database, um, you'll start uh, with um, just the table view. And this is going to contain a few different helpful views that you'll see 
uh, when we get to them. But you'll start with just the table view. And the first property, the title property, you can just call it task. That's going to be, um, of course, the task to be completed. It can be, as I've said, it can be those assigned tasks that are copied over from the uh, the filtered um, the filtered uh, master tasks database, and then it can be other tasks. It can be you know subtasks of those tasks. However, Carly wants to leverage this personal planner. This is entirely hers to use. Um, however, it helps her the most. So, um, the first property is the tasks property. So as the uh, intelligent workspace was kind of adapted from the para methodology, this planner is going to draw from a few other productivity philosophies. So this next property here is a context property. It is um, it's a select property, the, the no notions select property format, meaning that we're going to pre-populate it with options that you can choose from. But this, this notion of a context uh, for each task comes from the getting things done methodology. And um, by assigning each task a context, or, or in other words, kind of specifying where it needs to be completed, that allows you to view those items um, kind of independ independently in, um, in their own groupings. So that if you're going to be at your desk or you're going to be in a client meeting with Sweetgreen or UNC, for example, go Tar Heels, by the way, or um, or when you're commuting or running errands, you can view all of these in groups so that you can focus only on the relevant tasks for your particular circumstance. So to uh, to create this property, you know, you'll I'll just demonstrate it quickly here, but you'll create a, a new um, a new select property. Um, name it context and choose the select format. And then you can just add your, um, your context that you will use. You can have a few placeholders for your, uh, for your teammates, but they can um, expand this list on their own. So the getting things done method includes the add symbol um, for their, for their lists. Um, so uh, you can or, or cannot do that, whatever you prefer. But um, I won't demonstrate how to create all of these different options, but um, that's how you do so. So let me show you why this is so useful. We have uh, a few different board views for this database, and that includes a context board. So you can see here that this board groups all of Carly's tasks by those contexts, contexts. So she knows that if she's running into a staff meeting or she's running into a client meeting with UNC, or she's uh, you know gonna be commuting or out running errands, she can look at those specific tasks for, those, um, for that circumstance. Uh, and that will allow her to um, just you know, stay focused and uh, knock out the tasks um, in her pipeline when she's in an opportunity to do so. So it'll probably be helpful if I demonstrate how to create that board view quickly. So what you'll do is once you have your, your table view in place, um, you can duplicate that table view and you can rename it to your context board. and choose the board format. So that board is automatically going to choose a select property um, to group by. And you can see here that this has grouped by a different select property. It's not our context property. So to change that property, we can go into the group by option here within the dotted menu. And um, this is similar to you know, how we chose our calendar by option for our calendar, but we can choose group by and we can choose context. And that is going to display the items grouped by their context. So then you can hide this, uh, this grouping for those items with no context. Um, and then again, you can choose which properties to display with these cards. So, um, it's helpful to display, um, we'll be adding a, um, 
an area property. So it'll be helpful to display that area. Um, and, uh, and, and that may be it um, for this uh, context board. So you can choose whichever properties that you want to display within these cards. Uh, so that context board is really helpful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this since we already had another one in place. So looking back at our table view, the next property is the area property. And this is another select property. And um, so the concept is kind of the same as our areas database. Um, we, uh, you can populate this with, uh, with the same areas that are in your master areas database um, as options for this select property. And then Carly can add any others that she might want to include. Like for example, um, I'm not sure I've added any independent ones here, but she, she could certainly, you know, if she's a uh, part of a particular, um, like industry club or something, it could be, she could use that as an area. Um, so the areas will work the same way. She can, she can assign an area to each task and then, um, create a board for viewing all of her tasks by that area. So here you can see that we've, um, grouped uh the uh the tasks by their areas with this board view and if carly just wants to focus on unc at the moment she can see all of her unc tasks um and then you know she can see her her other area tasks here for her non-client initiatives such as loggerhead life which is kind of like loggerhead culture uh and events and that kind of thing um so that area board is helpful here and then we have a scheduled board. And this is really kind of the most helpful, um, probably the most helpful property in this whole planner infrastructure. So this is another select property that can be grouped within a board. And the options here are going to allow Carly to plan the task that she wants to knock out today, tomorrow, soon, which would be kind of like in the next two to five days, you know, this week, maybe uh, later would be kind of pushing it to next week. Um, and then someday would be uh, tasks that um, have absolutely no urgency, but just something you want to get accomplished whenever you get a spare moment. And then there's a waiting option for tasks that are dependent on um, other, other tasks. And those other tasks may be dependent on another person. Um, so there's an, a dependency there. So this, this notion also comes from the getting things done method. So with this select property also in place, you can create another board view, a scheduling board that groups tasks by those different kind of scheduling periods. And so this allows Carly to focus only on the tasks that she wants to complete today and only on those that are coming up tomorrow and then the soon task. And she can easily drag her tasks from one to the other which is really kind of the most powerful feature. So if she gets behind or ahead one day, hopefully the latter, she can shift tasks from one scheduled uh, category to another. So this is a really helpful way to plan her tasks. Um, and then the deadline property here is a date property. And that uh, is just for any, any tasks that have an absolute uh, deadline, such as, all of her assigned tasks, she can populate it here just to get a, a, a sense of kind of the sequence in which she needs to complete them. And then on, um, like in the scheduling board, for example, on any of these boards, she can include that property among those properties that are displayed and she can sort by that property too. So all these boards are going to be basically the same. Um, you can just choose which properties you want to display, but most importantly, you need to choose the proper property to group by. So that's the planner. And that's really kind of the most powerful feature of this. So let's look quickly um, at, at the second to last feature here, which is her weekly goal um, kind of tracker. So her weekly goal tracker is another independent database. It's not a linked database. It doesn't link to any of those master databases. This is solely for Carly's use. 
and it's not accessible by anyone else. So um, basically this is for her recurring weekly goals. Any goals that she set herself that she's for herself, she says she wants to accomplish every single week, she can populate within this nice board here. And so you can see that the board is grouped by, it has a column for each day of the week. So at the beginning of each week, um, Carly can identify when she wants to complete which goal and she can drag them from one day to the other. So let's just look really quickly at how you would complete this. Um, we would add a, a new uh, a new database and this one we can, because we don't have multiple views of this necessarily, uh, actually we will have multiple views of this because it'll be easier to create from a table. So let's create a new table. Um, an inline table and we'll call it weekly goals. And then for that title property, we can just use goal. And then we can convert one of these default properties to um, the day and make it a select property. And then each of the options that you'll include um, will be, you know, one option for each day of the week. So we'll just, we'll do Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and then we'll just, you know, for simplicity's sake, we'll do goal, goal one, goal two, and goal three. And for aesthetic purposes, I don't think you need multiple colors here that could get uh, kind of like a circus. Um, so we'll just make these all a nice yellow, as you see above. And then the last property that this needs is just a checkbox property to indicate when the goal has been completed for that week. So we'll just call it complete, make it a checkbox. Um, and so we have our uh, all the properties that we need for this, uh, for this kind of weekly goal tracker. So then to make it a table, we'll just add a view, or I'm sorry, a board and uh, name it board, select the board format and click create. And that's it. Um, we only, you know, entered a, three goals in three days of the week, but you can easily tell um, how this would work with five goals in five days of the week. So we can hide that first column. Um, and then so each week, Carly uh, can indicate when she wants to complete each goal by dragging and dropping. And as she completes them, she can check them off. And then at the end of each week or the beginning of each week, she can reset them. Um, by just unchecking the boxes um, and that's it. She's ready to conquer the next week. So the last item here is uh, a tailored list of links and resources that Carly will commonly access. So this can include a uh, link to page blocks that link to pages within the broader team workspace, um, or it can include kind of new pages. Um, that Carly creates for herself. So for example, we've created a filtered view of a master contacts database, um, which uh, configuring that is slightly more complicated than just adding a person property that you can um, add Carly to and then filter for that. Um, but if you're curious about that, um, ping me on Twitter and um, I can demonstrate that for you. But it's helpful to show all the contacts that are either associated with Carly's clients and then we've also included each member of the Loggerhead Labs staff too. And then the final item here is just a, a web bookmark, just to demonstrate that she can include web bookmarks here too. Uh, her, um, her weekly goals include a goal for taking um, one of these JavaScript 30 courses each week. So here she has a web bookmark that, um, that'll take her right to it. So I know that was a lot, but as always, um, you, you'll have the recording to reference uh, as you implement some of these strategies at your own pace. Um, and also you'll have that post um, on Notion VIP that'll be linked within uh, the webcast recording. Um, and again, your teammates have all the flexibility and versatility of Notion 
to, to utilize their private pages. But this creating a template like this is really, really helpful for them. And it, it's really a kind of a powerful extension of that intelligent workspace model too. Um, and if you're not following that to a T, like I said, as long as you are kind of using master databases in some capacity, then, uh, then all of this will apply there too. So with that, let's, um, let's, uh, open the floor for questions. We're technically 10 minutes, uh, over overdue here, but um, I uh, certainly want to be able to answer any questions that you have now. And I'm always available on Twitter um, to answer any specific questions that you have as well. So I'm going to um, look in here at the uh, ask a question feature in Crowdcast um, to answer questions. And then I might look through the chat here. So, um, we have one question that asks, can relational databases have locked filters to prevent someone from modifying the filter? So, um, so I, I'm not quite sure how, where relational fits into the question, but in general, I, and I may just need to think through that, but in general databases, uh, can be configured to be view only. Um, so, uh, when you create, um, view only, um, access to a database, then someone is not going to be able to modify, uh, the filters. However, they can create their own, uh, linked databases. Um, which may be what you mean by relational. I'm not quite sure. Um, but uh, when they create their own linked databases, they're going to have full control over the filters. Now, what you may be getting at with this is that um, when you share a database with anyone, whether it's someone on your uh, within your internal workspace or someone outside of it, and this actually gets back to the last episode um, that we had of uh, Notion at work, which was on sharing and permissions, uh, which also has a post on Notion VIP. Um, but if you share a database, even just a view of a database with anyone, you're sharing that full database. Uh, so that so sharing that database is going to give them, even though it might take them to a particular view, they're going to have the ability to to click a link and see the entire full database, which is a feature I'm very eager to see the ability to share just a view without sharing the full database, which may be what you're getting at with this question, like I said. Um, so, uh, but that's not in place yet. So definitely be careful when you're sharing databases, uh, be aware that you're sharing the full database, even if you're sharing just a particular filtered view of the database. So hopefully that um, answers your question. So I'm not seeing any others here in the ask a question feature. Was there any questions in the chat that you'd like me to address? Or did you need me to clarify that previous answer? I'm seeing a few comments here about protected database information. Um, hopefully that answer cleared it up for you. But if not, certainly let me know. All righty. Well, good stuff. Well, thank you all so much for, uh, for tuning in here. Um, as always, I know it's kind of a lot of information to, to digest, but, um, please utilize those other resources and, um, give me a shout on Twitter. If you hit any roadblocks and, um, I think that we'll be distributing a follow-up, uh, opportunity for you to make any recommendations for upcoming notion at work. Uh, episode. So I definitely want to be as helpful as possible um, and address the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the kind of most pressing questions for you. So we'll look forward to the next ones. Um, and in the meantime, I'll see you uh, in our various communities across the web. Thank you all so much.